Hey everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining me on today's collector car video. You say, Tone, how could you know uh, that it's gonna be a collector car or that is a collector car? And I go, you know what, you're absolutely right, but here's what I'll tell you. Here's a couple key indicators why some cars are worth more than others, right? And why this hobby is so great. When you can drive a car and it's going up in value as you're enjoying it too. That is the best thing ever because you can't drive your money around and enjoy it while it goes up in value, but you can get something like this. And I'll tell you why this one versus some others. All right, so I like to talk about paint because paint is, paint's the key to a car, man. You can say, well, Tone, I care about the drivetrain or the whatever. Agreed, it's all great. But if this car was primered, you wouldn't be watching this video right now. So my point is right that it is about the paint. So what I like to do is when you have an authentic low mileage car, 18,206 miles, I believe, as we're talking about this video, that's less than 500, let's say it's right around 500 miles a year that this car has been driven. Think about that for a second, right? This is 20. 24 that we're doing this video. It's a 1987 last year Buick Grand National. So what I like to do is I like to take this. This is an automotive device called a paint meter. What it does is measures millions of an inch thick. That's right, millions of an inch thick, right? Because when a car is painted, it goes down the assembly line, right? And it's painted either by robots or by hand, depending on when the cars were built, right? And it's a pretty uniform style of paint within, say, three or four millionths of an inch thick all the way around the whole car, right? So you could have maybe seven oh, here as, as more paint is put on the front of the car, then maybe as it gets towards the back, could be at the four mark, right? As long as it doesn't jump to 10, 12, 15, and 20, then we know the panels aren't painted. So what I did was I took this here and I measured that and we come in at 4.5, which is about the average of an 80s vintage car. However, what I did was, uh, I shouldn't say I, we did, what we did was we took it to the next level and we had a two-step paint correction done on the car. What that means is this, is that this right here was lightly, very lightly, wet sanded, okay, and then completely buffed out to give you this gloss shine. So what it does is it knocks down the factory orange peel on the car. Factory paint's still on here, right? However, it shines much more than the factory did. And it's also protected now as well because it has multiple coats of uh, that and maybe some ceramic coating if you wanted to add that as well just to finalize it. But what I want you to see is this that you're not going to see on other Grand Nationals. And this is the extra step that we do here. Check out, that's what I call a mirror finish. You can read every letter. Everything is super crisp, right? We meter the paint, we know it's authentic, and we look around the car and we go, wow, now I'm starting to get the idea why this is a collector car. All right, so uh, even better, we talk about some things like some tasteful modifications. These make a lot more power with a couple of modifications. However, in this case here, we have some external modifications, keeping also the original parts. Right? When I open the trunk and I go through all that trunk for you, I want to show you all the stuff that's been done. So this has an upgraded uh, MAF airflow sensor. Uh, this has the factory original intercooler with the uh, serial number on it. Uh, this has upgraded injectors and a few things, free flow exhaust. Like this car goes down the road very fast. It was uh, uh, at the time faster than a Corvette and you can definitely tell. Not to mention, it's a great driving car, right? When you drive these, you sit in them and they are comfortable, they are fast, they are air conditioned and power seats and power windows and cruise control, all the things that many of our old school muscle cars did not have, right? And then you throw in super low miles, so many original things on the car down to the original decals are still in place, right? Even the original hood struts in here, which are kind of weak, I think we have another set for them, but we didn't replace them because we didn't know whether you wanted us to or not. Tell Tell us whether you want to. We'll put the old ones back in there, but you're going to see some cool stuff in the trunk. Anyway, uh, I believe even the alternator is original in the car. The decals for the power brake uh, master cylinder are still in place. The decals for the air conditioning are still in place almost 40 years later. This is what I mean when I say collector car. All right, so why are these cars so coveted, right? Because they were powerful. They were very powerful and they handled well. They rode ma amazing, right? Buick was making one of the nicest cars out there. Uh, I was a Buick dealer back in the day and I we'll have to tell you, man, the Buick, we had Buick and Cadillac. The Buick was a nicer car than the Cadillac. 
hands down. All right, so here we get things like what make a Grand National a Grand National. Blacked out, right? Back before murdered out was even a term, they were already doing it. Rear spoiler, front spoiler, blacked out trim. Because a lot of people say, Tone, why is that a great look? Or no, they'll say, that's a great looking car, but they don't know why it's a great looking car. And so I say to them, like, here's some of the things. This we just talked about. Everything here blacked out. Black moldings around the car, right? Those are big differences. Go look at a regular Regal, even a black Regal and T-Type, and they don't look anything like this, all right? So in here, all right? All of this is an original. This is a very important piece of the car, and that is this build sheet right here in the trunk lid. Uh, Amber's going to take a photo of that. But in here we have listed beautifully here, uh, also the original shocks. 1987 shocks are still in the boxes here, okay? This was an upgraded Bilstein suspension on this car. This person spent a lot of money on this car, not only improving it, but keeping all the stock parts, knowing that someday, like Copo Camaros and all those things where you want the original parts back on it, all that stuff's like right here. Here we have uh, the original. This is crazy, right? This is the kind of person you want to buy a car from. The original door speakers are in here with the screws, okay? And in a baggie, right? Still in virtually perfect condition. They upgraded the audio system in here. So the original head unit is here. The original head unit is still here, so we can put that right back in there and make this all stock if you wanted to. Uh, I might even suggest you put the head unit back in there and put the custom stereo either under the seat or in the glove box and hide it that way. But my point is that all of these kinds of things upgraded. Brake accumulator, which they're known for those to fail. Here's two extra ones just in case, all right? Um, and then in here you have uh, an upgraded oil pan, which is a little deeper sump than the factory one. All kinds of parts in here. Fresh set of windshield wipers that I believe has the original 1987 wiper blades in it. It just goes on and on. Original jacking instructions. Like this to me says, okay, this car was not in an accident in the rear because they didn't replace the trunk. How do I know that? Well, you can't buy this decal. This decal is all the options as it would have gone down the assembly line of what to add to the car. So the people building the car knew that. It's still in place. And so we know that this part here is original. And all of this stuff will come with the car. We'll leave it in the box if you want, or we can give uh, in the trunk, uh, leave the boxes in the trunk, or we can give them to the shipper. You just let us know. Or maybe you want to pick it up or whatever. But uh, that's exactly how you want to do it. You can't help but when you walk up to this murdered out car, which wasn't even a term yet in 1987, how cool it is. It looks sinister. If you're any kind of car guy, gal, car person, whatever, you know when you see these right away that this is a Grand National. It's why they become so collectible, why they've been coveted. And, the, and some of these with, with even lower mileage are cresting that ninety to $100,000 mark. That's why it's so important to get in on the ground floor and get yourself something uh, before it becomes ridiculously expensive. Think about a la uh, original 60s vintage GT500s and those kinds of cars where you missed out on them, right? This has, uh, back to the comfort part, right? This is what I loved about these cars. You got power seats, you got tilt wheel, you got cruise control, you got intermittent wipers, you got climate control. This has an upgraded audio system in it. Again, we looked in the trunk, all the stock stuff is there. If you want to put it right back to stock, you can do that. You could take this if you wanted to and hide it here in the, uh, in the glove box. Inside here is some cool stuff, the original owner's manuals, uh, books, all of that cool stuff still coming with the car, which I just love. Power windows, rear defroster, right? Uh, uh, mirrors that are there. Uh, this, unfortunately, because of the year of the car, uh, has an 85 mile an hour speedometer, but it's correct. Okay, if you don't love that, Dakota Digital sells an upgraded one for this if you wanted to change it. But we wanted to keep this all original and authentic. The tack is there. Uh, this is not the digital version because the digital versions of some of these cars uh, are problematic. And this one is not in that place. All right. And lastly, uh, it's the drive and the sound that this makes when it goes down the road and it chirps second gear just while you're driving. Uh, you already know something's definitely serious in there. It seats people comfortably in the back. The interior is spectacular. Like, look at these mats and things. This is the upgraded audio parts of the audio system. Feel the plastic is good. The dash isn't cracked. The mirror is original. The headliner uh, is notorious for uh, falling apart. So we did replace the headliner in the car. And that's really the only replacement part uh, that I know of that you really can't save because the way they did it back in the day is they would glue this to uh, uh, this foam backing and it would just 
crumble over time and then it rained all in the car and you don't want that so anyway all original interior carpets console all this stuff super super show worthy and super exciting all right, so we close up this video. Let's run down why this is a collector car. First off, it's the last year made, right? Those are typically always the, the right ones. Low production, super low miles, 18,206-ish miles on it, right? Driven around 500 miles a year, right? We metered the paint for authenticity. The interior was original. It had some tasteful upgrades in the car, but most of the original parts that, uh, that were exchanged over are come with the car, which is cool if you want to turn it back into exactly as it was bone stock. And it's a great driving car and a great sounding car. That's the best part about these cars. It's why people love them. Because most people say, well, why does everybody love the Grand National so much? Well, I'll tell you why they love it. Because first off, it is fast. It goes, 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 but it's comfortable. And you could go for to the drive to the beach in the car. You could go out to dinner with another couple in the car. You can go to a car show. Whatever you want to do, you can do in this car. It's a real world car you can use all the time. Anyway, call us 301-816-1000. We'll tell you about all about this cool Grand National collector car. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, hit the like button down below there. That helps get the message out. Maybe share it with your friends. They might like it as well. And I will see you on the next one.